And so when I looked at running for Congress, that's one of the reasons I ran. I have been in the prosecutor's office in Cass County for eight years. And of course, Johnson County is uh, part of the 17th Judicial Circuit, so kind of consider Johnson County and Cass County sisters. And it's a, a nice thing that we have the same judges. Uh, we have very good judges in Cass County. We're very fortunate to have them. But in the eight years that I've been in the prosecutor's office, uh, you know, one of the things that I've been able to do uh, is bring people together. We have the child abuse response team that has brought together uh, the folks that make up those reporting and investigation and prosecutions of children who have been sexually abused. And so when I first got into office in 2005, Monica and I actually uh, met with the folks with the Child Protection Center and the Juvenile Office and the Children's Division and all of the law enforcement and we brought in uh, actually even um, the uh, Children's Mercy Hospital. And so we were able to do a, an organization that meets in my office once a month that comes in and works on best practices. You know, we don't always agree on everything. In fact, we didn't agree always on the first month or the third month or even the tenth month. And even after having done this eight years, every month for eight years, there's still times that something comes up that we don't all agree on and we have to work it out and, and get to, the, again, the best practices for the folks that are in Cass County. What are we doing to make sure that things are working well for the constituents of Cass County and especially for the children of Cass County. And so for me that's what running for Congress is about. When I have started the DWI task force that does the same thing and the arson task force and the domestic violence coalition that meets once a month, it's about bringing people together that will work on issues, on things that are critical to us that need to be uh, not just ignored. Uh, unfortunately this Congress has not done this. This Congress is so worried about being political that we know back in March uh, that they refused to even bring up the 1994 Violence Against Women Act. And this Congress and Vicki Hartzler uh, voted not to even bring it back up to reconsider it. An act, which was actually in 1994, voted by over 40 Republicans helped pass it. Uh, it was a bipartisan issue. In 2000 and 2005, George W. Bush signed it back into law. And so this Congress, these Tea Party Republicans had decided they weren't going to uh, even bring it up for consideration. Well, you know, in the prosecutor's office, we recognize that domestic violence is real. Uh, it is in our community, and we can't ignore it. Uh, it is something that we need to be vigilant about making sure that we are doing preventative uh, work and that we are getting successful prosecutions for those who do abuse their spouses and so and or their um, their partner. Uh, it is something that this Congress didn't want to consider for partisan reasons. It was a political game. And so when we have a group of people who don't have our interests at stake, they're more concerned about staying in office, that's a problem. Um, as a prosecutor in Cass County, I love my job. I have nine assistant prosecutors and 10 clerks and an investigator uh, that are people I look forward to working with every single day. Um, but for me this year, it was an important year for us to step forward and say, you know, our families are at stake. This is the same Congress uh, that wouldn't consider the 1994 Violence Against Women Act that also voted for the Paul Ryan budget. And we all know that the Paul Ryan budget is just bad for middle class Americans. We know that it's bad for uh, our seniors and our future seniors to give a voucher on Medicare. Let's talk about that for just a minute. My dad's 76 years old. He'll be, actually, I'm sorry, just turned 77 in September. Um, he has had five bypasses and 13 stints. In fact, one of his bypasses has three stints in it. Uh, so imagine him going with a voucher that the government gives him and tells him to just go out and find his own insurance at 77 years old. My dad sends my mom to the grocery store. He's not going to probably find insurance that's going to be happy to take that voucher without more money. And my dad's on a retirement. My dad's on Medicare. And it works very well. The last thing he needs is for them to change that. And the last thing those of us who have paid into it need them to do is to change that. And so when you also look at what they would do to uh, student loans, and they'd have 18-year-olds just go out and get their own loan, or as Romney said, let them ask their parents for a loan. Uh, you know, I don't know how many banks, and I'm sure most of you don't know many banks, that would give an 18-year-old a loan for their student loans, for their school to go to college. Um, this Congress is just so out of touch. And the Paul Ryan budget is just a mean-spirited budget. It's a budget that doesn't reflect the interests of the very people that we love and we care about. And so when we are looking at going to Congress, we're looking at sending someone, I hope you will continue to support me and, and 
seek to send me there so that we are able to, you know, cross the aisle, hope to get people uh, to start working on the issues that mean something to us and what those issues are, again, are our families, whether it is my 77-year-old dad and mom, or whether it's my 18-year-old nephew who needs loans to go to college, or it is my brother who's an iron worker who needs a good wage. Uh, you guys have heard me say this many times, but my dad in 1974 makes the same as a plumber that my brother does in 2012 as an iron worker. In 38 years in this country, we've had very little raise, but we know that we've had a huge cost of living increase. Corporations and big oil companies are making record profits but our families aren't. Our families now are struggling. My dad didn't struggle to uh, make a living. I didn't ever hear my dad as a child say he was worried about losing a job or losing his house or that we were going to live on the streets. I never heard them worry about whether they could afford to take me to the doctor. But our children today hear those worries. Our children today have no foundation under them. They have no security. They have the same worries. Don't think they don't hear their parents worry about whether they're going to be able to keep a job or find one if they lose it or whether they can afford to take them to the doctor, or whether they're going to have their house. Imagine a child worrying about whether they're going to get to have their bedroom a month from now. And that's what we hear. So my brother, who works a 40-hour work week, sometimes more, has a difficult time paying his mortgage and $3.50 a gallon of gasoline and sending his wife to the doctor and in having increased doctor bills. Those are a real concern for our families today, and more so for our children. And so this election is about us. It's just about our families. And that's one of the reasons I decided to run. Again, I feel like Congress is broken. They're not doing their job. They're, they're not even interested in going and working with anyone. You know, cooperation is not a dirty word. Working together, negotiating to get the best for the people that we uh, would serve as public servants is what this ought to be about. So um, again, it, it's really, it uh, means a lot to me that all of you would come out here for lunch today. I appreciate seeing all of you so much, and so we will hang around for a while if anybody wants to visit. And thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm a prosecutor. I spend a lot of my time dealing with domestic violence cases. In fact, Monica Penrose in my office tried one of the most uh, serious domestic violence cases we could have had in our office. Uh, we had a woman who was held captive for two or three days uh, and, and her boyfriend practically beat her to death. And so to not take that as uh, a serious issue to come before Congress and to just make it partisan and to, to set it aside, say we don't even want to think about that, um, it's just negligent. It's just, they're really not doing their job. Uh, and so we also can look at Vicki Hartzler's vote on the Paul Ryan budget. And so she absolutely has supported that and has stood forward saying that uh, she's in favor of voucherizing Medicare. Okay. She recently got a, uh, she, she, you may have seen it in the paper, she recently got an award um, that she touted as being the seniors who gave her an award. And it was called uh, Retire Safe was the organization. Retire Safe gave her this year an, an award for her support for their issues. And she set it out in a press release as a uh, having supported seniors. Uh, in fact, Retire Safe's main goal was to privatize Social Security. And so we all know what would happen to Social Security if it had been a part of Wall Street. And so again, I think the issues that we can see where she's voted, uh, the things that are very dear to her, uh, are clearly the things that I think I very different from her own. And so again, especially the Paul Ryan budget for me, you know, budget says who we are. It, it says our priorities and, and what we consider important. Uh, and we can see that uh, Vicki Hartzler in this Congress uh, considers the wrong things important and takes away, you know, they, they want to give continued tax breaks uh, to the wealthiest of the wealthy. Continue to give, they will fight for federal subsidies for big oil companies mm -hmm. and they've made record profits. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have to start leveling the playing field. We have to start creating jobs. They they failed to create jobs because they were too busy uh, with partisan politics. There's so many things that we could do. Um, you know, when we look at energy sources and jobs, two things that are critical to the middle class, critical to families, um, that alone is an issue that we could make work so well. Historically, 
The government has, as you know, um, when the ship industry decided they were going to build ships, you know, the, the federal government was right there to get those industries off the ground. When they started building airplanes, they were right there to get that industry off the ground. You know, having wind farms would be an availability of an alternative so energy source for us while creating jobs. So imagine that we have uh, these wind farms that we're going to put around the country and we have folks who are building the turbines and they're delivering the turbines and they're installing them when they get there and then there's folks who have to do maintenance on them and the folks who have to be working in the manufacturing to fix maintenance parts. Uh, the retrograde of the system uh, to go into residential and, and, uh, and government buildings to replace those systems would create millions of jobs. The infrastructure is another place where they just have failed us the last couple of years at doing anything for our infrastructure. You know, we have roads and bridges and schools that need to be rebuilt, which would be good for our citizens and good for the jobs. So there's a lot of areas where we just don't agree. Uh, and basically, I, I see them doing nothing.